do the um, north. Oh wait, are we on? Yeah, red and black. Oh, oh, the oh, there it goes. Okay, to the North Bradford Planning Zoning uh, meeting for Thursday, August nineteenth. Nineteenth. In attendance are regular members Mace, Sienna, and I'd like to welcome our our new commissioner uh, Bob Nowak. Thank you. You're gonna have to turn that sideways because I'm gonna. <laughs> Be here for a while, and I'll still um, mix, um, miss your your name. Okay. All right. Um, before we get started, the first order of business are the meeting minutes from May twentieth, and I am not sure. Do you know oh, if you there? Because I don't think Trish was there. If I'm not mistaken. The table the one, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have to table. We're going to have to table the May twentieth meetings because. Um, Trish, you were absent, and Bob will have to abstain because he wasn't here. Uh, and then the July 8th meeting, uh, meeting minutes, we should we be able those. to do. Uh, yes, because it was myself, Trish, Ron, Bill was here, but he's not here tonight, so. I think we did through all this. I saw this. I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 8th, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing not, seeing not, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any, uh, in, uh, you'd like to abstain? Abstain. Yep. Thank you. All right. I sign this. Okay, thanks. All right. Our first order of business will be a public hearing for application 2021-8. Uh, it's for a special use permit. Trish, it's you, you I'll get, do the honors. You get the honors. All right, this is a legal notice of the North Brantford Planning <laughs> and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold an in-person public hearing at 6.30 p.m. or soon thereafter on Thursday, August 19th, 2021 at the North Brantford Town Hall, Council Chambers, 909 Fox and Road, North Brantford, Connecticut, to consider the following. Application 2021-8, Special Use Permit and Site Development Plan proposing an addition of a new three-story mixed-use meaning office retail on the ground floor and six apartments on second and third floors um, a mixed-use building on property located at 1355 middletown avenue in a b2 zone and northford town design district 2. applicant owner ihh properties llc at this hearing all interested persons may appear and be heard and written communications will be received copies of proposals are on file for public inspection in the town hall planning and zoning department a copy of the application is also available on the town's website for public inspection. Thank you. Is there any notifications that we have to go through or we're good to go? That's it. Okay. Uh, before we get started, I just want to go through the, um, the, the public hearing process. <clears throat> uh, we'll start off with the applicant. We'll go through um, his uh, you know, site plan, what, what he's here to, what he's looking to do as far as the uh, public hearing. Uh, there might be some comments uh, throughout that uh, from the commission. Then after that part's complete, we'll open the floor up for uh, public comments at that time. Uh, after that, uh, I'm not sure, but what will happen, we'll either continue it to the next meeting or we may take action on it depending on if we have all the information that's uh, required uh, to move forward. If not, like I said, we'll continue to uh, a future meeting. So uh, if the applicant's ready, if you want to just come up and, and kick it off. Do you, do you there or? Yeah, please, yeah. yeah you, you want to pull that mic a little bit closer to you, if you like. If you want to sit or you can stand. So just go over what we're looking for. Uh, yeah, for. let's start off with your, your name and who you represent. And oh, sure. Edward Lawton, um, owner of IHH Properties. Uh, live 
here in Northford. Um, so we're looking to add an additional building to the Northford Triangle, which currently has three buildings on it. And um, as you can see from the site plan, it's six residential apartments on the second and third floors and an office uh, retail space on the first floor. So the proposed building will be going on the uh, Forest Road side, um, kind of across from the Dunkin' Donuts uh, and that gas station over there. Um, so we would be extending the parking lot and putting the building in the grass area where it is, um, where there's currently a playground uh, and just grass. So we'd be re relocating the playground on the, on the site. We actually own building two, which is right above it. And then the other buildings are owned by uh, the engineer, Nafis and Young, and then um, Lifelong Dental Care is building number three. So, so this is right off the road, correct? So this would be Correct. close to, okay. okay. Yep, it has frontage on Middletown Avenue and Forest Road, but that's where we decided. Bu building five is the engineering? Yep, and that okay. is, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any plans for the building itself? For, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I provided some plans. You have to open the other file. Oh, okay. Just explain a little yeah, bit about Yeah, explain through the, you know, the whole site plan, the, site, okay. the whole site. So um, the building there would, again, the parking lot would extend from where the current um, one is for the engineer's office, and then it would go straight across uh, to add additional parking to, um, you know, be sufficient for what we need um, in all the parking calculations. Uh, we designed the building to incorporate within the town to incorporate the third floor we use dormers and roof lines to make it aesthetically pleasing um, using uh, some trim and azac trim and all that kind of stuff to you know again make it appealing because it's going to be one of the first things you see coming from the north Brantford side to the northford side so we want to make sure it's fits in with the town aesthetic and everything like that um, and we you know, think it would also add to the um, ability to have rentals in town because it's scarce. I'm also a real estate agent, so, and our real estate brokerage will be going in on the first floor. Um, so it's, um, it's, we're, there's a lot of demand in town for um, apartments and things like that. I get asked all the time since we have a building with apartments currently on the property, um, so people are asking all the time. Um, connecting to city water and city sewer which is part of the regulation we did get our approval for the connection to sewer um, already um, a while back um, trying to think of any any other things you want me to cover or I pass by there all the time which building has apartments on top of it already so actually all f all three of them oh. do they all have two apartments each kind of never noticed that. so on the um, what types of materials will you be using on the outside? So I know the design district has um, rules for materials of either brick or a clapboard siding. We proposed um, an AZAC trim with, um, we'll actually get them custom made where that a siding would go into it, not having to use a J channel or anything like that, which someone actually brought up, but we're planning on that anyways um, t in one of the public comments that I received. Um, we would like to use um, vinyl siding if the commission would allow um, because we just think it's a more durable product that doesn't have to be repainted over the years and actually the other buildings on the property have already vinyl siding. They used to be the clapboard wood siding and they were just deteriorating and it just doesn't look good over time for sustainability. So 
um, that's why we kind of want to go that route. We would like to do a larger than the four by four standard siding, um, either a six over six or something like that, just to, again, keep it in line with the New England kind of style. Um, we'd like to do on the roof details, um, like a standing seam metal roof and then some gussets and a lot of AZAC trim all around that's, um, again, custom cut so it's actually integrated and not just pieced together, which a lot of um, buildings and stuff do do that, unfortunately, which it doesn't look that nice. So our goal is to make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Just a quick question. Sure. Uh, the other buildings, you said they were, you want to go with uh, six over six to make it more New england -y. Yeah. Uh, or what are the other buildings? They're four over four, and it's just kind of that typical builder grade look. So we just want to make it. Yeah, but isn't four over four New Englandy? Whereas um, six over six looks like uh, or five over five. Um, we did a project actually on Tommy's <laughs> path um, that we did five over five, and it just looked a little better um, with that like kind of farmhouse look and stuff like that. So I just think it looks better personally. I live down Tommy's path. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I have a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I wrong? Is four over four more New Englandy as opposed to six over six? Looks like uh, well, a lot of the you know, um, mass production. Am I allowed to talk? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Back yeah, and yeah, forth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like a lot of the I've done a lot of um because I aesthetics are like a really big thing to me. So I've looked at a lot of different photographs and pictures and of buildings and stuff like that. And it's I just think it looks more a little more custom looking. Um, but everyone's open to their opinion on the different look of it. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if it would look out of place with the other buildings in the complex. Yeah, yeah I don't think so, but... Anyway, that, I'm sorry, continue. Okay. Bob, you had a question? Yeah, I have sure. a question. Have you considered a combination of a cedar type shape kind of siding with the conventional siding that you're proposing? Um, the yeah, ox to I accent it even more? That. That's a good idea, and like maybe the roof gables on the, the third floor. Um, it would look nice to incorporate that possibly. So yeah, open to that as well. So how about uh, AZAC? You had AZAC or equal on your drawing there. So does AZAC have an ability to, um, the normal, all the other buildings are one homogeneous color, like you said, a builder grade. And we've come a long way in final siding these days where it's multicolored mm -hmm. with the wood green look to it actually embedded in the vinyl siding. Have you considered that? Yeah, the use of vinyl products that have that wood um, grain to it. Right. And it, is that the color it's going to be like a gray? Yeah, I would like um, like an earth tone color similar to that. Aren't the other buildings? Similar? They're pretty much earth tone colors, so it wouldn't. Yeah. It would definitely stand out, no doubt about it. It would be a, a good addition to Northwood Center as opposed to your other three buildings, I'm sorry to say. This no, yeah, I totally agree. No doubt I, about if it. I built them, I would love to build them better looking, <laughs> for sure. And hopefully over the years when, because this building will add to the complex's funds and stuff like that, we could start to improve in doing more because just to be honest with you, the budget's very tight, sharing with the other three owners, because it is such a small complex, there's not a lot of money in the budget to, we pay a lot of money in condo fees right now, and there's just not a lot of money in the budget to do like additional landscaping. What I'd like to do is eventually get the grass to be treated and nice and green and all that kind of stuff too to just really make it shine in the center. Can you walk us through the interior? Sure. <clears throat> so the first floor um, on the right side and possibly the left side would be our uh, office space. Um, depending on how much space we need for the build out for the office, we would do that. So um, the entrance, it would have two entrances on both sides with uh, glass. Um, so basically a double door and then glass on each side, storefront glass um, and with white um, trim, not like just a metal trim, just to incorporate with the upper stories windows. Um, so they're basically just an open shell on the first floor, which our office will be built out um, Again, we would like to do a New England style on the inside too with shiplap and um, nice wood flooring and that kind of thing. 
And then on the, the right side is, there's two entrances to the apartments. On the right side is a covered area where you go into kind of the apartment lobby, um, and then you would have access to the elevator to get up to the second and third floors, uh, staircase. Um, and then the second and third floors are pretty much identical. They have a hallway going down the center. The, um, the back apartment has two bedrooms. Uh, it's around 801 square feet. I um, feel like we laid it out pretty well. That's going to be conducive with um, you know, today's lifestyle. The front two apartments, the one on the front right, that has a two bedroom, um, bedroom on either side, one bathroom. And then the one on the left is a one bedroom. Um, again, I think they're pretty well laid out, very functional for the size. Um, did a lot of research on different floor plans and what works the best and actually have toured a lot of different properties to see what would be the best use of space because sometimes when you go into apartments they're very choppy and not laid out very well. Um, kitchens are kind of hidden in like a galley type of thing so we want to do an open concept. Again, fresh bringing in, you know, people that would, young professionals, retirees, all types of people that are looking for a comfortable living space. We also did laundry in unit, um, which I think is important these days. No one wants to go to uh, a laundromat to do their laundry. Um, again, we have an elevator. Um, it is required, but we also think it's a convenience thing too, especially having a third floor. Um, I think it would be ideal. And then on the other end of the hallway is another way to access the building in and out. Um, we do have quite a bit of windows to let a lot of light in. The difference is on the third floor, we're going to do um, not just flat ceilings. We'd like to cathedral them to make them, you know, have a little architectural interest on there. Um, again, we're trying to make a nice product that people would want to move into. We're going to do nice materials, granite. Um, uh, still thinking about the cabinets and stuff like that, but I think like a modern kind of aesthetic with um, engineered hardwood flooring and then carpet in the bedrooms and then all tile bathrooms and things like that. So we really want to make something nice. We're not just someone that just wants to throw up a building and use the cheapest materials possible to just get it rented out because it, it, we do live in town. It's, you know, something that we want to be proud of when we, you know, rent it out and stuff like that. This second and then the third floor? Um, they're yes, actually identical. Wait, wait. That might be the third floor. I thought it said second on the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh there you yeah. go. Yeah. The only difference is because of the dormer, it has a bump in of a, like a foot or two on the front center. Okay. And then there's a full basement we'd be doing for, and we would actually like to include storage for the units because storage is always huge. And then um, for our office to have some storage space, we'll kind of dedicate it out with uh, different um, separations. I have a question for yeah, you. Sir. Refuse? Those, yes, um, so currently the um, refuse is on the Middletown Avenue side of the building. Um, we do have dumpsters there that are in a, um, a gated area. Okay, you can improve that a little bit, kind of make it look nicer than what it is right now. Yeah, improve yeah, I, it. I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> it would be good if you put this nice building up. Right? Yep. No. Hmm? Any concern for traffic onto uh, 22 from the back um, and forth or anything like that? I go in and out of there every day. It's pretty. Um, pretty easy. Okay, I, I, I was holding my question about sure. traffic too. And um, <clears throat> by the sheer name of the complex, <clears throat> it's a triangle in the middle of, it's an island between two highways. And you have um, two bedroom apartments, which means kids. And <clears throat> there is no area for playgrounds, minimal. Uh, that being the case, the school's right across the street. Mm -hmm. um, will you petition whoever the powers to be to get a crosswalk 
There From actually is a crosswalk today. Yeah, have you seen it? Yeah, but I've I've used it before, but you mean like repaint it or or yeah, it, 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 it's is. it's been worn out 10 years ago and uh yeah, it's there but it's not yeah. there to be seen by a car doing mm -hmm. 35 miles an hour through the center of town. Right. Uh, also with the traffic you're coming out basically across from Company 2 and Company 4 is to your other side. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, there's no, uh, there's no boxes or lights in front of the firehouse. So I, 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 you know, I'm not against the project. I'm just thinking out loud yeah. th that, you know, there's, you go through the center of Nordford, uh, you know, people, let's say four or five o'clock, people cutting across from 91 to uh, the go home in Guilford rather than, you know, they know the shortcut through Nordford. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of traffic. Uh, the Nordford Green is not the easiest to uh, coming off Clintonville. Yeah. And there's no aids for pedestrians in that area. I mean, you've got the restaurants, you know, on the other side of uh, Route 22, you got the school and the playground on the uh, off of Middletown Avenue, and there really isn't a way to cut across. Yeah. Um, what you do have is a pull-off for tractor trailers to go to Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, I, I would yeah, I, I be open to looking I, into I think, it. I, I, I think never the traffic, thought of that. The traffic so. idea in that area needs to be, you know, thought out and and fixed. It's a, it's not a problem that you. Yeah, you know, I guess working with the state road, I, is it a state-owned road yeah. or? <coughs> Both yeah. are state. Yeah, so I just don't know the process yeah. of ha making the state do something to the road. So I could explore it. You know, I, I, I don't know the answer, but you know, no, you, it's drive a valid th point. you drive through downtown uh, Durham <coughs> and they've got the, you know, yield to pedestrians right in the middle of the uh, street. Uh, Choate has them all over the place, and Nordford can't get them. So it's. Yeah, I wish the center was more walkable too, like a lot of other towns. Yes. It would be nice, you know, if, no, we haven't if everything had. We haven't got the sidewalks yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess I'm on his side. How do we address this problem? I mean, I brought it up many times before, and, you know, uh, I've been told anyone trying to cross that road is crazy, but uh, well, we have. I mean, we have crosswalk. We we have cross uh, crosswalks. Uh, we're uh, more towards the triangle, where the stoplights are. In the library. The, yeah, it's where the library. No, no, is. where the library is is down the other side of Northford. No, Center. I know that. I'm just saying that, that you know because there's sidewalks. So the sidewalks, like you said, like in Durham, there's sidewalks on both uh, on one side. That's Correct. why there's a crosswalk in there. Some of the other towns, we don't have sidewalks. But the only thing we could do is petition the state to add them somewhere if we wanted to, uh, and have the state the state uh, would have to DOT would have to you know we'd have to go through their process wherever we wanted we could because I mean, I mean we're, the center of Norford the firehouse doesn't have a light or a box for traffic to stop when the engines are pulling out right and Company Four which is the ambulance company doesn't have it either so. You know, the ambulance has to wait for traffic to stop so we can pull out into traffic. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's I, I, the I state guess probably doesn't think it's enough traffic to warrant one because they would have put one in there like they did in Durham. So, it, I mean, that's up to the state. It's a state road. Yeah, right. can, we I, can't I, put one on I haven't there. seen a firehouse that doesn't have a box or a light in front of it. No. I'm, there are some, but yeah, I mean, most do. Yeah, I haven't seen one. Oh, no, I'm just saying most do. I mean, most do have a light. All do. Well, except one. Well, no, I stand corrected. It's the one state. in Norfolk doesn't. Well, it's 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 a state. It's the state determines if it needs a light or not. Firehouse doesn't warrant a, a, on itself a yeah. light. It's They're going to put it at a traffic area that meets warrants, which is a whole series of different data points that have to be meet. Just because it's a firehouse, you wouldn't automatically get it a, a traffic light. 
So I don't want to get sidetracked here. Right. Keep on, on point yeah, here. No, but no, if we, if to, we to, to backpedal again, you know, my concern is the traffic, the fact that we don't have crosswalks, we don't have traffic lights in the area, and the traffic is, you know, more families without a large playground. I mean, there's, there's restaurants on one side that if I was a young family, hey, let's go for, you know, dinner across the street or take the kids the other way. And, you know, it's a safety factor in crossing the street to get to the other side. And that's what I'm bringing up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not that it's your fault. It's, I'm just I get it, yeah. So. Are any of your apartments now two bedrooms? They're all two bedrooms. Do you have any children in any of those apartments? But the potential is there. Yeah. No, it, yeah. it is there. I mean, the two bedroom is the cr is usually the threshold where you don't generate many children, but it is possible because there's not that many apartments. <laughs> <laughs> two bedrooms normally means children. So, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to get to the point where I told you so. Mm -hmm. You know, someone gets hurt there. Yeah, that's something like see so if you want to look into this, that would be the state DOT if you if you want to look into that. Okay. So. Any other questions? Or do you have anything else that you would want to review with us? Um, let me just get that. <coughs> so what I'll do is we'll just uh, move that and just see if you were aware of you know, some of the quick sentence a little bit about. You're going to do it or you want me to do it? I could. Well, you would. You would. Yeah. 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 I did have a question for you, Harry. Sure. Um, there was a comment about the trees. Are we removing the trees, adding the trees? And then based on the historical element in our regulations, there's, it only calls for pin oaks along the highway line and it identifies other trees within the property. Are we, wh where do we stand with that with the site plan? Well, we'll uh, one of the comments, uh, we'll get to in a few minutes, but one of the things was on the site plan, uh, we would like to see what they're, um, you know, what they're going to be putting in. Make sure these are all added. You know, what, what are they? And we can we, we can go we can review that uh, right as soon as he uh, is ready. Yeah, I I was actually going to talk about the trees because I okay. didn't. Um, but one tree, one tree in particular. No. Oh, okay. No, just in no. general. Okay. Just in general. Yeah. Okay. So the um, on the street side, there are quite a bit of trees that have matured greatly over the years, and the only thing that we are saying is that it would we're going to be building this big, beautiful building that's going to be a nice asset to the town, and trying to promote business in town because um, I think that's important in the town center. Being able to see it more would be ideal. Um, we So just for example, we're going to be a real estate office. I don't think the town has any brick and mortar real estate brokerages in town. I think that's a vital factor to a town center because um, you go to the Guilford Green, they have in Brantford, they have all real estate offices lined up the whole road. Not saying we need that many, but it's nice if someone's new to town or is looking to explore town, knowing that there's a real estate brokerage there, um, hey, let me stop in, see, find out a little bit more about the town, that kind of thing. I just think drawing people in would be um, a more um, appealing thing. And of course, we would do um, whatever type of trees that is required, um, you know, and keep them tidy and everything like that. So I just think it would be be nice to have a more visual from the street. So, the, so these five trees here are existing, correct? Correct. Okay. So, are, is your intention to uh, take them down and replace them with some other types yep, of plantings? A, yeah, to just replace, literally, from where they are, just with a, a different tree. Okay. Something ornamental. It could be. We're not. I'm not a very um, green like. Um, gardener or anything like that so I'm not sure I would seek more professional advice on what would be appropriate in that location okay. are you gonna put the trees where the other ones yeah basically okay. in the same spot I know there will be stumps so maybe we'll have to put them we'll dig the stumps out and put them uh, my only thing is as long as the trees aren't a tree that grows in a way where now you can't <laughs> yeah they do kind of cover like 
they we had on, on the other side of the property where the tip is we actually had to prune a lot of trees because they were getting so yeah. overgrown and you couldn't even get the cars through Correct. because it yeah, was that's my only concern. so whatever you choose. I would like to keep something that's more yeah. I don't know what kind of tree it would be but yeah. something right. that stays nice more ornamental maybe put Christmas lights on them in the uh, the holidays and stuff in the summer you were about to say summer That's yeah we do. <laughs> but you hey, know, we do them in the summer we're, 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 yeah. nice. we're, we're only four months from Christmas so yeah you know, we're getting close, close. Nice. You know, I believe after fourth of July you might as well put up the Christmas lights yeah <laughs> so so one thing on the on the site plan so <clears throat> when it comes to finalizing this and if we get you know and if it moves to a vote we will need the site plan to identify if you're going to take what, what's where are you going to put things, especially mm -hmm. the plantings and what they are. Okay. So you you know so and, and I think that was some of the comments that I think you were showing that to need you know some of the updates we need to see on the site. Yeah, plan. I didn't want to um, have the engineer change it and then have to change it again. So I just was going to do everything at once. Oh yeah, absolutely. It, so so because uh, you you saw the list that was provided. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. So from that list, are there anything? I mean, I'm not sure if you how far you went over that. I did look at it. Is there me. anything uh, that you feel uh, is too much of an ask right now? One of the things was the drainage aspect of it because the stormwater um, prevention plan. Yeah, not so much of asking for like um, I guess a pit test or something like that. Um, the soil there, so we currently, the three buildings, it was built before the sewer requirement was in and they're all septic systems. The engineer that's on the property is very familiar with the soils and it's basically all sand. It, everything's self-contained within that complex and it's, it, the drainage is not a problem there. So I just, they said to expand the, um, the drainage and stuff like that and the engineer was kind of um, saying he, it would be sufficient because of the the conditions that are there. What engineer? Our engineer? No, um, Nafis and Young. And our engineer was telling you to expand um, it. I, there was a comment. Was it our engineer or was it yeah, a this citizen? Yeah. I'm on that one. And Victor's here, okay. behind the mask. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, Vic, Victor, if you can, you just give us um, a, a, just a little, a little reason why we want to looking for the expansion on that sure any supporting documentation that your engineer can provide would be helpful sure. to verify that at least the bottom of the system that they're proposing is above any seasonal groundwater table so if he has old uh, testing results from a septic system installed we can start from there and maybe avoid having to do a, an actual test pit on the site okay I'm, I'm just trying not to the, yeah. the whole thought is trying not to propose a stormwater system that's you know collecting surface runoff and have it already be full of groundwater so we can definitely work with some testing results that you have all right so so what you're going to do so what so you, you have all these so then what you're going to do is update the site plan all the site plans to the recommendations that were provided yes okay um and then also so far tonight you know talk if we can get a better idea, of, you know, specifically where what you're going to go on, on for the exterior, because I know you're, you're, you know, there was mentioned four by four, five by five, six by six, wood grain. So if we can get a better idea of whether that be very helpful. Okay. Right. Would the um, since I know the design district says um, a certain thing, but a lot of buildings in the center are built with the vinyl siding. Would they? Consider it. I don't know if you're the same. Are you guys the same people as the? Um, I'm in support of the vinyl. Yeah, I mean, okay. they, they yeah, provide they provide a recommendation, but yeah. when it comes you to guys the vinyl, yeah, say. yeah. Okay, so I just we didn't. Work, okay. We work with them hand in hand when it comes to. So we want to make sure that uh, we meet uh, a lot of the criteria. Uh, okay. I mean, sure. you had a valid point about you know where. Yeah, you know, I just don't want it to look old in right. ten years, fifteen Start, years. Yeah. 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 So we, we understand that. So, but we work with them. So we will, gotcha. we will run that through them as well. Um, so I just have a question, Harry. For sure. the historical district, what element in the building is historical in nature? If we wave out the requirement for wood or stone, we're bringing vinyl. Like the other buildings, and I understand that, in the historical district, shouldn't we want to have a, an element that's historical from our own regulations, some kind of stone? 
we're going to concede on the vinyl, which we have well, throughout the whole entire district, right. as it's the, the gas station across the street has a, the vinyl component, which looks really great, and I'm not, not opposed to that. But as a commission, do we want to bring some kind of element of historical significance into the building that to bring that out, besides conceding on that? I mean, our regs are pretty clear. This, this, or this, or at our approval. Right. So being this the first one that I'm here, uh, maybe we can make a move to do something different for the rest of the corridor. Obviously, the bank is up next and right. so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, and whatever, if you have some suggestions too, some ideas, I mean, you know, what we could what we could do, yeah, we can attempt, you know, we we'll talk to them about incorporating that as well. So do we have a master plan for Northford Historical District on the elements other than what's in the regs or schematics, what we like to see? Pretty much what's in the regs, but okay. we do run it through, uh, is it Steve Shelley? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a play. Is it, I think it's Steve, correct? Steve Shell. Yeah, so the, the design district, let's call it. Yes. yes. And what they'll do is they'll 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 take a look and yeah. opine on it as well. So we take you know we, we get the recommendation and then work with the applicant to come up with you know make sure it's suitable for the area and you know everybody's comfortable with that. Okay, makes sense. So let, let me tag on to that. Um, with the Nordford Center Village um, revitalization, and I didn't see, I saw the sidewalks in the center of your property. Mm -hmm. um, was there any thought of putting sidewalks along the street? Um, um, I, on, only in so far as you're going to have retail businesses in the middle of your building of your complex so people have to walk to it right um so i did think about that the some of the concerns i had is um obviously it's nothing to connect to so sometimes you go in those sidewalk places where nowhere. there's a sidewalk to nowhere and yeah, then the, yeah, um, the, and i'm thinking you got to start somewhere um, so i hear both of you on that but i would I would think, like, you know, you know, the historical elements in the sidewalks, but I feel like this is like a smaller project to say, let's jump off on this when, well, like, you know, North Store was rebuilt recently. It, it would be, I feel like we do too much with this one small project if it's then going to stick out against the way the rest of the center looks like. Yeah, so I would go for like a bigger project or if like we were redoing right. the facade of Northford Center, all the businesses. If yeah. we get if we get all the business together and say let's put sidewalks in front and yeah, get I think it has to be a we shouldn't put a burden on thing. the applicant just to put sidewalks in front of his when yeah, it, we put the stone yeah, I would so agree. Where, where's it gonna go? You know, so we put the burden on CVS and the you know, the sidewalks go to the crosswalk to the library right. that walks right into the hill there. Um, yeah, the wrong side of the street, but uh, you know, yeah. I think it'd be a bigger, a bigger effort. Yeah. So are we going to wave all sidewalks in town? I guess that's what I'm. Yeah. You know, I, well, you have to start somewhere then. Right, but we, I don't think this is a start. But it's not. Put, I, I don't feel it's a place to start until because again, it's you're just going to have a sidewalk in front which nobody will use. Or like you know, if we eventually get the state to put in better pedestrian crosswalks and lighting or boxes you know then that can jump off the other side this side but yeah i agree to put so yeah. much on him with right this one but building. right right now he's into the you sorry to talk about you uh, it's okay in front of you uh, he's in the development stage where he's going to have the equipment and he's going to be doing the landscaping and everything as opposed to you know later on down the path you, the expense is going the expense is going to be doubled if not tripled to grade and put in sidewalks. I believe that the sidewalks are, you know, you know the, the onus is on the developer. And, you know, if we have to start somewhere and we have to start sometime. We made an attempt in front of the Nordford store and CVS. And then, you know, those open up into parking lots and, you know. And that's what's gonna happen with this. It's gonna go right into the the gas station for what purpose so i think it needs to be more more of a team effort and a holistic approach versus one little project 
Yeah, in that part of town, the, the, the idea of the sidewalks was we're on the opposite side of the street. So people would connect all of us, so people could walk from one plaza to the other, up towards the bank, and across the street. It, so it was, it was on that side of the street. Because there's nothing on that, the other side of the street except for those couple buildings and the gas station. So people would have to cross over eventually, and how are they crossing over if it's not safe and there's no other sidewalk on the other side? So right. to put it on his project, <coughs> it's probably not the most appropriate jumping off point. He also has a fair amount of right of way it's in front of him, as you can see on the lower end of the map, which is going to present issues because now you're projecting into DOT where he doesn't have to gain DOT permits at the moment. Um, and DOT typically doesn't really like sidewalks in the right of way. Um, so that would be quite a, a challenging design project. And if bringing sidewalks to Northford is a great idea, but I think it also should go hand in foot with uh, reevaluating the road system. And that, it make changes to the road, it's really going to change where sidewalks would go. Yeah, I mean, this is an opportunity to pull together yeah. the retail. You know, if, if you're going to shop in one plaza to walk across the street to your plaza and the storefronts that are going to be there, and, you know, to throw our hands up and say, oh, it's, you know, we're not, you know, sidewalks are a tough thing and yeah, you have to start somewhere. Well, I'm not saying Agreed. Talking. No, we yeah. agree. It has to start somewhere, but yeah, just not so. with his project. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. with who? I would, I, to me, question. to me, I would bring it to the economic development, yeah. and have them talk to the businesses, and then work from there. Because again, if you put sidewalks there, it's only even the best case would be going to a gas station. And like you said, there's no safe place to cross. Right. So I, I wouldn't even consider sidewalks until we have safe places to cross. Right. I mean, you don't. I mean, you, 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 if anything, you would probably want to. Or just a crossing from here because you wouldn't want to walk to the, across the gas station when it has two entrances. So I don't. We're getting off track a little yeah. bit, but we could we could discuss that more. We could we could discuss that more uh, down the road as well in, in this application. <clears throat> um, I just have one more question sure. for the for the trees. Yep. Right. So um, in the regs, it has a uh, uh, a distance, a trim line. I believe that's the height of the tree trimmed to a certain distance for visual traffic movements and exposing your property so the trees are matured as you had stated stated and the property is a little bit elevated so you might want to consider just trimming the tree eight feet and you'll have a more visual uh, appeal to your property and there will be a lot of shade there and you can put the ornamentals in addition to that on state property with their approval of course off their property but you still can get that element I think that the uh, ornamental trees that you put up are going to be two, three caliber, and not going to be very tall, and it'll, it'll be a visual block to your establishment by having those type of trees. That's just my opinion. Anything else? Um, so, would you, would your, the, when you, when you um, you're going to address all the concerns that we have on the site plans? Go, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, would there be a process of having, um, you know, before the next meeting, having uh, like Will look at it or something like that to, in case anything needed to be changed before the next meeting? Is that an op option? Yeah, yeah, so you could work with uh, uh, the planning department on that. Okay. Make sure that you have everything incorporated that's there. If there's any questions, they can be solved there. So you can, you can work with the team uh, for that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. So at this time, um, everybody else set? Yep. So we did get a couple com um, um, uh, written uh, comments. So uh, uh, Will's just gonna who they were in a, a brief, uh, briefly what the, what those uh, comments were. So we did get a comment letter August 18, 2021, from Steve Nugent. Um, he owns 1386 Middletown Avenue. Um, he's complimentary about the architectural plans. He did raise the issue about the A's tech and the vinyl, and that's something you've already talked about, obviously. Um, he talks about the ceiling heights, and I think to some degree you've addressed a little bit when he's talking about the cathedral ceilings on the third third floor, but he, he noted because of the height limitations of the, of the code with the three-story building, the, it's a very short height on the, the floors. Um, he talks about 
uh, the civil engineering plan said about um, concern about telephone electrical cable services, indicating um, that he didn't see, I don't think he said he saw them on the plan, um, but he, obviously keeping them in the ground is important. They're required to be underground anyway, so but if we need to clarify where they are, that's something you should put on the plan. Um, he noted he didn't see anything about air conditioning units, um, so you might want to talk about where, how you tend to do air conditioning, where those units are going to end up. Um, if they're on the ground, how they're screened, if they're on the roof, how they're screened. Um, he, he disagreed with taking the trees out. Um, he thinks that the trees that are there are more important. Um, and I think in your understanding, you guys should consider the difference between an ornamental tree and a shade tree. The trees that are there now are shade trees. That's a larger tree. Ornamentals uh, tend to not grow more than 25 feet high. Shade trees get up in the 50, 60, 70 foot range and they provide greater shade, greater canopy. Um, they just have a different appeal. And you're right, if you trim them up, you can see through, which is what you're after, where the ornamentals are lower to the ground and, and are, they flower better. They look nice for a while, but they can be messier too. Um, Uh, he didn't really see much planting materials beyond just a little planter in front of the building, which echoes some of my comments. Um, he talks about there's more parking than required. That's, that's fine. Um, and with regards to signage, um, I, he's more concerned about the signage was, you know, how stuff doesn't get caught behind him, how that would be handled. There was another letter from Donna Persley. Um, her focus was mostly about um, lighting, um, the use of full cutoff lights. The lights, um, they're trying to match the existing lights, so um, again, in my comments, I commented that they need to be more specific as to which features are on the light. You just had the general spec, and, and you are using uh, soffit lighting, which is full cutoff, obviously. So I think a lot of that is probably addressed, but getting the specific detail of the, the lights would be helpful. So those were the two comments. There also was a comment letter, in addition from mine and the town engineers, from the fire department, from the fire marshal, um, and he's just really reminding. Um, one comment he has is the fire department apparatus successfully would like to be accessed on two sides of the building if possible. Um, that obviously isn't really possible on this site. Um, and then he just reminds other things about fire load conditions, not specific. That's it. So what we're going to do at this time, um, we're going to open up for a public comments. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll hear other comments, and then if there's anything you want to respond, if you just want to write notes down, and then you can respond to those comments uh, if we if, at that okay. time. Thank you. Uh, so if anybody would like to speak on this uh, public hearing, this application, Please step up to the mic, uh, your name, address, and your comment, please. One question I think if you'd be helpful to view the uh, screen here. Uh, Dom Delvecchio, 847 Forest Road. And uh, I was just wondering if you could revisit the floor plan for the apartments on the second floor. Sure. I want to make sure I'm following the So you have a total of three units on the second floor, and, then, uh, and a total of three on the third, correct? Correct. Okay. No, I just wanted to clarify. I couldn't see it from that far back. All right. And uh, regarding the sidewalk issue, I think this has come up many, many times in this area, and I think Will raised a valid point. I know that when we were uh, applying for a special use permit for the businesses, the food service establishments across the street, that the right-of-way on both sides of Forest Road is really retained by the state of Connecticut. So I'm, I'm not even sure there's room. Even if you want that, Ron, I fully understand where you want to go with it, but I don't think that uh, the property owners own that property in that area, on, on either side, for that matter. Yeah, I can't remember how many feet off the center it goes. In, into oh, the it's enormous. It's enormous, because the thought was they were always going to expand that Route 22. Right. And uh, so that never really uh, transpired. So I know that issue has been brought many times. I don't want our side anyway, mm -hmm. on the Forest Road side. <laughs> but it is a good thought. I agree with you. Sidewalks would be nice, but I'm not sure it's going to fit here because of the state owning the uh, right way. All right. Uh, the other thing, the water, when I was looking at the site plan, I noticed you're bringing the water in from 
uh, 17th, Middletown Avenue, is that right? Okay. And uh, any thought, why not bring it over from 22, which is closer to your building? Would um, it be? Well, the current buildings tap into that side. I didn't know there was water on the other side. Well, it's an individual service to the new building. Is that correct or no? Correct. Okay. No, I'm just like, it might be cheaper just to pull it. I didn't know there was on the middle town. I mean, the forest yeah, road Yeah, it's, it's also on the forest road side also. I could have my engineer look at that. That's yeah. a good point. Okay. Engineers should know that. Hmm? Engineers should know that. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it may be more a product of if our RWA is, has an existing lateral on the water main. And it could be. Service it could be. Right. Yeah. Crossing that the property, street. Then it would make, probably make more sense to connect in on 17 if neither one of them has an existing lateral. Yeah. If there's a main on yeah, Forest Road, the then, then you know, it's, it's probably whichever is closest for right. you to be able to well, the, road, to the, the main on Forest Road is on the uh, shopping plaza side, so you would have to cross. Yeah, that's probably not. 22. Not now, on, on, on the Middletown right. Avenue, I'm not sure which side of the street. I believe it's on his side. It's, is it on the school uh, side or is it going to no, be it's on, on your side? side. Okay, yeah. so that's uh, that's the reason. Yeah, you, can check, you can check with your engineer and yeah, just double-check that. Double check yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. And the other issue that Ron raised on the traffic, now I know typically at a special use permit on the food service establishments, right, there was always a traffic study required, but I'm assuming that as part of this mixed-use application that the regulations probably do not require traffic. Study, is that right? I can go back and read them, but I, you know, I yeah, I think because there's multiple uh, on that side of the street, there's multiple uh, businesses or potential businesses. So in those cases, uh, we had to. I know in the food service. On this side, on this side, I don't think it's required. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, now, I mean, if if it was more evasive, then we could request one, but we. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think see, it's required. I don't see pursuant pursuant to the regulations. For That's that. my understanding of yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the amount, amount of traffic coming in and out of the gas station. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, plus you have. Pales and computers. You have the daycare yeah. people. Yeah. You know, morning daycare. This right, is going right. to be less evasive. I know for the sure. food service establishments, yeah. obviously it was a requirement. We had the drive-through. We had all that, but I don't think it's a requirement for the retail and uh, mixed use. I don't believe. But. Right. Uh, and then lastly. Is it is like you said? I think it's a it's a great opportunity to improve the center. I don't think I, I'm certainly not opposed to it, but just as a uh, as a reminder, the notice, the public notice for the hearing, typically has to be mailed certified. Is that right? Or did you change that? No, it's not. It this just has to be the. I forget the term. It's a certificate. It's a certified mail, right? Yeah. No, certificate. 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 Yeah, that's it's a state, not certified. The state, okay, so yeah. it's not certified. The state, okay. the state changed that uh, a few years ago, I believe. 60, it's 63 too, I think, in the regs. But you're saying, okay, just proof of mail. And that's the way they, okay. as far as I know, yeah, no, they've been doing the state, for a while. The state changed the requirement. Yep. yep. No, I was just curious. Yep. All right. All right. All right. That's it. Yeah, it's thanks. a great project. Right. Thank you. Yep. Would anybody else like to speak? Any other comments? Please. Uh, your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Lawrence Cordova. I'm the owner right next door to your project. And I have a safety concern. Are you planning on putting up some type of fence in the woods? And the reason for that is that I came home late at night and I was a flashlight. Someone walking their dog. And the whole back of my house is nothing but glass windows with no curtains. So anyone outside could see right into the house. So that would be my safety concern. Or so, some buffering. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the, um, we could look at it. It's kind of like a hill. I don't know exactly. Right. Like, um, the previous owner built that hill yeah. so they can have privacy for they wouldn't see the center of the town. Mm -hmm. So, but if you climb up the hill, the guy that was walking the dog, the hill is not that steep on one side oh, where they got the two the trash cans. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just take a look know. at that. Scene yeah, right. for sure. So that's yeah. my concern. Thank you. Okay. Would anybody else like to speak? If that's who else is getting up. Oh, same concern. Oh, okay. Same concern. Okay. Perfect. Safety concern. All right. So I think we gave uh, anybody else. So I think I think we gave you a bunch of information to work with. Um, you know, to update the site plan and you know, and then it, what we could do is uh, I'm going to ask uh, the commission to continue us to our next meeting. So at the next meeting we can kind of go through you know, everything we talked about, the some of the recommendations that Will had and we had, 
and then you get more, you know, give us a better idea of, of, of some of the plantings, you know, where, you know, the, the materials that you really would, would like to use. If it's six by six, whatever it is, we just want to hear what it is. And, you know, if you had a sample, that's great. If you don't, I can understand, you know, you might not be able to get any types of samples, yeah. but, you know. But we just want to get a better, uh, you know, a, 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 a fuller idea of exactly what it's going to be when it's com uh, completed, if it's approved. Okay, thank you. Harry, I got one more question. Sure, yeah. Please. So, um, did you uh, drove through there the other day and your, was there any comment, I mean, any in the proposal for the sign on that side of the road? The sign um, on the road? Yeah, your, your, your directional the, sign there. The, the dentist, even though we bought the rights to the complex basically, but the dentist, when they bought it from the previous owner, because um, we bought the rights from the previous owner as well, they have exclusive use of that sign. So we can't do anything with it. So was there any consideration for the two businesses on 22 to put a sign? We would love to, but I don't think the regulation allows it. Okay. You can, I mean, you can look at this, there's regulations for signs. Yeah, you can't put, you can't have a sign on, on DLT property. Um, and I think the signage has to be on the building, if I'm not mistaken. Right. They I are think he was talking about the street sign. They're proposing oh. building signs. Okay. They just don't have access to the freestanding sign. Yeah, they can't the sign add on the. Um, they can't add another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Unless you want to let us do it. <laughs> oh, then you have to work that out with the dentist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have that kind of power. All right. <laughs> so, the only other comment I have is regarding the sidewalks. So, working for the DOT for 35 years. If there's no sidewalk there that exists currently and they come and wind the road and we want a sidewalk, the town would have to pay for the sidewalk. I don't know if you realize that or not, but that's the, that's the deal. So if there one is there, we will pay to remove it, replace it as we wind the road, the DOT would. Just to let you know. That is good to know. Do you know that? Thank you. All right, uh, well, uh, well, so our next meeting is... Well, are we Keep the public here public hearing open. Yeah, we're gonna continue. Oh, right, I'm gonna ask. September second. Yeah. So if somebody can make a motion to continue this public hearing and state the uh, application number to uh, September second. I make a motion to continue the public hearing for application twenty twenty one dash eight thirteen fifty five Middletown Avenue dash B two in Northford Town Design District two to our next regular meeting on September 2nd, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes four to zero. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you at the next meeting. All right, next up on the agenda uh, is new business, application 2021-10, and that is for applicant from Guilford Savings Bank. Way too many things going on here. It's okay. I'm gonna lower this and sit down. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You guys got? Do you all have a map? I'm still looking. You have one? I'm close. I got here. I got eleven. Trish. I'll share with you. Stuff, but uh, they, they have a response to the chat we got the other day, which I circulated to you. Okay, yeah. Oh, gee. This they sent. 
I sent that to you just yesterday. Oh yes, yes. That was in the. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. You're all set. Uh, ready to go? All right. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, or excuse me, good evening. Uh, my name is Alexander Salpasso, uh, Vice President of Operations at Guilford Savings Bank. Um, what we're presenting today is uh, an application for your consideration uh, what, uh, to install an exterior ATM uh, at the uh, 1409 Middletown Avenue property. Uh, it will be leased. Um, and we go for Savings Bank has made the announcement that we'll be uh, putting a bank branch there, full service bank branch. Um, in this application, uh, what we're looking to do for again consideration and approval is to move the ATM to an exterior location, uh, as noted on the site plan. Um, this offers several different benefits: one, access to the local area for convenience banking services; uh, two, uh, it's more secure. Uh, we have greater sites of visibility, uh, and three, it's just easier and more convenient for the customers. Is it a drive up one or drive. Is it walk up? Okay. Yep. So it'll be a full drive up. Um, what we're proposing on the site plan, uh, as noted uh, on the left there, uh, is that we're going to make some pavement modifications, cut some curbs, uh, and make it actual a lane perfect. Um, so the intention is that they use the one way access ways, either from Middletown Avenue or Mansfield, uh, pull up to the ATM on the left side uh, and then they'll be able to exit right onto Mansfield Road. Um, in the uh, proposal we'll be doing some site work, trenching, recurving um, after working with Will and Victor um, found that uh, we had an abundance of parking um, so we were able to sacrifice some parking there. Uh, we will be running data, data and electric from the building at 1409 to the proposed site, so that will be a trench, as noted. Um, and um, I think that's about it. On this site as well, the ATM itself will have a uh, exterior covering. Uh, it's a steel structure with, um, it's like a color laminate. Uh, it's a ceramic laminate. Um, and the signage uh, will address, there's another application coming through at 21. Uh, 20.20, 20, uh, 20, 21-9. Um, however, what we're looking at for the dash 10 application and provided in the response with some of the concerns is as for consideration for number 10 is we can install the ATM with blank signage. Uh, so conforming to uh, uh, code in that area. Um, a couple items that were brought up for concern, or not concern, uh, of reference. Um, we're really uh, what and where are we marking on the trench? Um, I submitted a memo uh, just with some of those responses uh, that was provided, I believe, earlier this morning or late last night, one or the other. Um, and what we're looking at is the trench. If we can go back to the um, site plan, uh, right where you see the electrical and data line, uh, that's going to be 24 inches wide, 24 inches deep. Um, in doing so, we're going to intersect pavement, curbs, uh, all of which will be restored. Uh, the existing pavement uh, we will be removing, off, and that will be dis uh, removed and brought off-site for disposal. Uh, we'll be refilling the trench with topsoil and then repairing with the new asphalt for both the uh, curbs and the pavement itself. Um, I'm, just yeah, go ahead. I'm curious because um, I need help understanding it visually. So this is the bank, right? Correct. So right here, this is where I usually well, used to pull in, right? And these are the parking spots? And this Correct. Is, are these parking spots coming out? And nope. this is going to be a, a drive through to get to the ATM? I'm just thinking people driving in, people backing out, how do you get to the ATM safely? Yeah, so what we're envisioning is people pulling in uh, that first parking lot, and that's really the one way because you have the, um, the drive up lane there as well. Okay. It's all the way up top, and then you would come all the way around and pull through the ATM. Um, there. Uh, we hadn't explored removing those parking spots as well. Um, 
just to keep so this within is this. This is not time. an entrance, right? Uh, there is a cut there. Oh, there is. That's yeah. right. There is further down. Yep. Yeah. Yes, that one helps. <laughs> Way better. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, in the, if you want to go down to the site plan as well. Uh, so what we're looking to do with some of removing some of the parking spaces uh, is to install new islands. Um, what we're really, again, security and safety is pretty uh, paramount, with, especially with ATMs. Um, so maintaining lines of sight, limiting cars, blocking, uh, this will be replenished by a security uh, vendor. Um, so making sure we have clear lines of sight just for security purposes. Um, all of that new curbing will be conforming to the existing location um, to, again, um, just conform to for aesthetic purposes as well. Uh, the ATM will sit on a uh, concrete island um, per uh, security specs for where we have to do anchoring, which are in, I think, the site plan, um, the construction plans as well. Um, and I, uh, but again, open to any other questions. Is the ATM two-sided? Uh, one side. So it's just going to be on the left side? Correct. On the, uh, or well, on the right side of the plane. Okay. Yeah. You could still right. walk up to it. Um, however, we're intending it to be a drive up. Have you considered having it two sided? To build uh, on the question? We have not. That would double. Uh, there, if for an ATM to be two sided, it would be two separate ATMs. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it would double the hardware so cost. The only suggestion I would have is that on, on this entrance here, maybe at the end having a stop sure. and also uh, where you have the the other stop when you're coming down maybe uh, to guide some a person and have uh, like ATM on the ground you know with the arrow straight just so they know to go around to the other side especially at night you know so if they can if, depending on which way they pull in absolutely they, and then so a car would come around and then you take a left into right. it correct okay. Yeah. Or if they come in, you know, if they came in here, yeah, they go just down. have a so this so ATM down. straight or however it works. But here, definitely have like a stop, a, yeah. maybe a, a stop sign or something similar to that. Sure. Um, now, the actual building is being used, correct? Correct. Oh, that's going to be the, the in, walk correct. in for the bank. Correct. Okay, I thought for some reason. Does anybody have any questions or? No, no I, I, I'm just working. In 1972, I moved my house off of that property. Uh, the, uh, another question is, um, ATMs are well secured into the the ground and everything like that, correct? Very well secured. I, I don't want to know details on how you do it or depth or anything like that. It, I know ATMs have been stolen out of convenience stores, but correct me if I'm wrong, they've never been stolen out of banks, right? Uh, people have tried. I'm not aware of any that have been successfully ripped out well, I'm sure they destroying tried, the truck, yeah. Um, so there, there's a bunch of site considerations that we use with our third-party vendor who specializes in ATM island construction for exactly this reason. Uh, there's also other security devices that deter uh, individuals from even considering it. Uh, it lights up like a Christmas tree should something happen. Yeah, that, something was, that was going to be another question. There is sufficient security, mm -hmm. cameras, whatever. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm, I don't know why I'm stuck on it. Why not make the, like, why not sort of, I'm sure it has to do with the curb cotton in Mansfield, but why not, again, just thinking about security, right? Like if somebody's coming to carjack me while I'm at an ATM, I just want to drive off, I don't want to have to take a right, so why not orient the ATM like this so I could just come around and then go? You don't want it in the travel lane, though, because that, yeah. would, that would conflict with the traffic flow. On this, like, no, if you turned it, like, so I pull up and now it's on this side. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're in the traffic lane. You're in the traffic lane in the parking lane. Yeah, the car's but coming in. Because is there a curb cut here? There's not, but no. the cars could be parked there going in and out. And that that's would what I'm saying. Why well, like, make it a one way? I don't know. Yeah. I'm just thinking, and I'm, I'm not being facetious when I say that. I know somebody chuckled. I'm being exactly. serious. Like, I don't want to take a right. I just want to, because if you think about ATMs you go to, most of them you just have to drive straight. 
I might have made. I might, I might have made an error. This is the side you're gonna. You're, the cars are coming this side. You're gonna. Um, they're gonna be coming right through that channel. So bring your finger. Oh, right here. Right here. Yeah. You, oh, you come okay. Around I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I, I have no clue how much any of what I'm saying could influence the design, but I, that's just what I'm thinking. Well, other than trying to get away really fast. Um, <laughs> It actually calms you by having the turn, which is actually better when it's in the parking lot because you have to make a concerted effort to know where you're going and make a turn. Oh, no, I was just worried if I was getting carjacked, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Um, I just want to be able to drive off. I don't want to take a right. But that's clearly just me. I there, my, there could be other people. I get my mirror as close as that ATM as I can. As I can. <laughs> so I just have a question. Have you uh, checked out the turning radius coming out of that parking spot where the ATM is? If someone is parked there, it doesn't look very wide. Um, which uh, you're exiting the ATM. You have, to, you have uh, parking spaces right here, so you're coming out this way. Like a right, the space between where the arrows are on the right looks a little bit wider than the exit. Here, right? You're talking about that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that between lower radius might there. want to be a little. A little wider. I know you have an oversized lane, so it's mm -hmm. it's, it's it's bigger than a than a regular lane too. Because you you may have cars coming in that way. Sure. Because so. the the canopy is overhang, so the the darker edge is really the lane edge, so it's quite wide. But I think you're right. The bottom might want a better radius. Do, do smooth do that we out. need do we need those parking spaces? All of them. They're right across from the. Uh, yeah, those. Then the other question I have for you is your decision to put it in the middle was guided by I'm uh, just thinking if setback. I'm struggling. Yeah. Trish is at the ATM. Well, I'm parked where the arrow is well, yeah. and someone's behind me kind of thing. So was there any consideration to move it? towards the Manfield Drive, one more parking space to allow for an additional queue of a car park. Yeah, Because you know, if someone's parked there, no one would be able to back out. Not that there's a lot of traffic th that I'm aware of anyway. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Um, when we were considering it, because it's a corner lot, the setback from the back of the, the, the way the lot is configured left actually a night, like a, a, a available area for which we would be able to put the ATM. Um, so, when we looked at it, that gave us just enough room to um, successfully do what we were looking to do. Okay. We didn't try to put it back any farther um, because what we're relying on with some security as well is sight lines from the intersection of 17 and 22. Um, so if something were to happen, we are increasing our visibility. We did not want the building to be blocking uh, the ATM site itself. Okay. I think we're, we're unfortunately probably dealing with a pixelated, a photo, yeah. photo scan, photocopied version of this. I think that probably says 50 foot yeah. front setback yeah, line right there. Yeah. And so that's that's really what's dictating where it ended up as far as you know distance from this, what would probably be a, a front property line of Mansfield Drive. So the question I have for the, the commission is the, again, this is a historical district what historical elements are in the ATM outbuilding, I'll call it. Right, because it is a kind of like an outbuilding kind of thing. There's nothing really to it other than four steel pillars and a roof and a box. You follow me? I, f I follow you. I'm just, I'm not, I mean, that, I'm not, I mean, there's not much we could do with that. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I can't, you know, I mean. Uh, well, it's not up to us. It's up to him to propose something for the historical well, nature of the some kind of guidance on that. Okay. I mean, I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, when I think that regulations, I don't know if, uh, I'm, when we're talking about the actual buildings and structures, we want to make sure, I mean, we want to make sure it fits and comfortable with the, the area. As far as the historical, uh, you know, trying to add something into that, I, 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 I don't know what that would be. Uh, it would have to come from you or, to, to give them some kind of guidance of what we'd be looking for, but I don't know if, it I mean, to, to apply it here, I'm, you know, I'm not. Well, actually. okay, so it's historical and it's a country kind of flair, right? So yeah. would we want to just see still pillars like that? Or would we want them to see them encased in some kind of brick facade that kind of spruce it up instead of the 
a bunch of steel pillars. Or they're so close together, make them one, encased in some kind of facade to make it more than just a bunch of steel hanging out there. And it doesn't even go with the environment that we're trying to bring forth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me jump in here. I'm sure this is not your first ATM machine. It is not. <laughs> so what other designs do you have, i.e. in Guilford or I don't know where else? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we have uh, branches in Old Sabre, North Madison, Madison, uh, Bram uh, Bramford, uh, North Haven, and mm -hmm. Guilford, a couple in Guilford. Uh, what industry and what we traditionally have at all of the locations is a steel structure. It's weather resistant, it's more secure, um, and remember this is a driver plane. People are going to, we've had people hit them. Um, so if we were to install physical brick structures and that gets hit, that ATM's out of commission. We have to do a bunch of site modifications to build it. So what I'm hearing is this is what you put everywhere. Um, we put something similar everywhere, uh, depending on, like there's more complex ones you could do. Um, there's more structure, like uh, tin, um, there's like kiosks that are internal um, that we're trying to get away from because uh, again the, the maintenance on them especially with the winters uh, just it's, it increases cost and honestly after a few years they don't look that great um, so we're switching to this design which is a ceramic coated steel which makes them much more resilient to weathering for and uh, discoloration on sunlight do, do you have, the, do you, do you have an, actual, an actual view of one uh, in the memo um, I provided an image of one that we have. Um, this one has um, this one has non-customizable signs, so it wasn't selected for this site um, because this is actually baked on. Um, but same general concept: steel structure, steel support. These are hurricane-proof or rated at hurricane speeds um, to again increase longevity at the site. I might have a, I don't know, Will, what level of, uh, or Mr. Chairman, what level of input I can give if I have an idea for something. Yeah, sure. So there's four, um, as far as the historical, and I'm a member, I'm an engineer, so <laughs> I got to sometimes strip away the technical end of me, but there's four bollards proposed here, is that correct? Uh, those are the footings for the covering. The okay. bollards are right at the corners of the ATM. Okay, so they're right here. Is there, is there any, would you give any consideration, or, or there's bollard uh, covers that they have that you can get that presents different historical type concepts, whether it be a, 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 a ring to tie a horse, which obviously there's no horses pulling up here to use the <laughs> ATM, but you know, they have different historical. Well, we're in North, on. we're in North, North Branch. You never know. You never know. So there's different, and, and you know, you can get into catalogs and catalogs of, of different overlays, but we've, I've used these on different projects in, in other towns where, um, you know, it just, it adds a little bit more than the standard yellow uh, PVC overlay that you usually see for a, a bollard. So just something to consider. And, and Mr. Nowak, I'm not sure if that, Kind of brings in a little bit of a historical taste of things or not, but it's just a just an idea. I got you, Victor. I'm an engineer too, so yeah, we I speak know. the same language. <laughs> it still doesn't take away the fact that you still got four green posts, right? Green. So the They're yellow. Well, they're the only. So we got four posts supporting the canopy, and then four ballards protecting the ATM, which is fine. They're yellow, such and such. But what are we bringing into the, from the town into the ATM? That's, that's only my, if we want to put up a, a, a cover around the posts that's breakaway, fine, or something like that. I'm just making a suggestion to kind of bring it, bring it into light instead of the ATMs out there and okay, this historical district, that looks really great. I'm just saying. Yeah, point well taken. <clears throat> so yeah, if you could take that back and just see if you come up with something on that. Then I would offer this to you. If you can't come up with that, then let's come up with something different. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Uh, if you want to bring an element into the canopy, that's an option, even though it's a simple canopy. So um, I'm, I think we're flexible in any way, which way, but I think there should be some element within the ATM that satisfies the surrounding area, because that's what our proposal is, right? 
or this district. So if I can just ask a clarifying question. Absolutely. Um, bringing a historical element into the canopy, uh, these are all fabricated steel one shot. Um, would it be utilizing some of the space above it? Like, th so all those sign panels around it are removable and incorporating something into there? Is what you're thinking? Could or? be, uh, yeah. See what, yeah, see what you come up with, okay. yeah. Um, and then there was a one other um, item noted in the staff memo um, was switching it to white, uh, seeing if we had some room to play with the color. Uh, again, in my experience, uh, white, especially in direct sunlight, turns yellow by uh, two or three years. Um, what we're, and when you add in salt and snow, which we know we'll have, um, it's, it'll, very short order, it'll start looking two different colors. Uh, turning what to white? Uh, so the green, uh, proposing the green of the actual structure change to a white. Okay. Um, again, in our, my experience, uh, the green much more resilient um, and uh, stands, stands up against sunlight and also uh, strongly deters weathering as well. Anything else? I know we're in North Brantford, so do we want to paint the post purple instead of green? Ooh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. The posts are yellow. We're not Guilford. Come on, we're no, rivalry. The, the posts here. are yellow, right? We're, we're posting <laughs> green. Which post? The, 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 the twist, like a barbie. Oh, there you go. Those, those <laughs> are, you only paint those green. You, you missed that. They get painted like a barbie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, just one move. quick question. Yeah. It, we're talking about signs and stuff like this. This all uh, fits into our uh, sign codes, and I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. There's nothing outside of our regulations for s the size of signs, locations. That well, that's the next application. Yeah. There's an application for signs on the agenda. <laughs> Coming soon. Yeah. I didn't read ahead. <laughs> So if there's nothing else, I think we need to continue this to the next meeting. Um, would there be any consideration for approving something for us to start construction on the site with some of the minor design elements that you have mentioned? Very quick turnaround times. Yeah. to everybody else I got my my thoughts but <clears throat> so yeah so to give some type of approval to start the construction but yet the design isn't finalized I, I'm supportive of being flexible like that especially with winter coming and etc but you're looking to put in the foundation of the ATM correct if I recall correctly you got trucks out there already right uh, we have, uh, that's for the uh, interior repairs and site repairs we're doing on the building itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're more, well, I'm looking more at the facade of the ATM as opposed to the actual ATM. You know, we need an ATM in the center of North for obviously your study would show that otherwise you wouldn't be sitting there <laughs> and uh, you know if you want to put the I, I think if he wants to put the the footings in and uh, start coming in yeah get what, that part what, once we approve it we're, we're done with it any facade would go to staff for their review just want to make sure you know yep no nope, that, yeah that just changed me 180 Meaning staff would uh, yeah, we work would, with the applicant to come up with the yeah, we, 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 we would draft a, We would draft a motion uh, to approve it with the following conditions, you know, uh, adding some markings on the lanes for stop ATM uh, and uh, a facade uh, to be reviewed by staff who's done it before. When it comes to things like that, staff, can, staff is approved 
uh, items like that before? Uh, I'm a <coughs> huge proponent I mean, of team yeah. effort, so I, I trust I mean, we're talking. Staff, I mean, so we're talk I mean, I'm going to be. Uh, we're talking about an ATM. It's a. I'm not. I'm, you know, I just some. You know, making the store. It's 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 a little piece behind a bank. I don't want to build it into a bigger thing than it really needs to be. If if it has. You know, s some little tweak is going to make that much difference in the scope of things. I think there's bigger things that we should be concerned about when it comes to making things, um, you know, in, the hist in, in that design district. I don't know, holding it up for just that. That's just my. You, you can make a conditional on. Yeah, um, I'm not coming I'm back to you for that specific issue. But then it could be long drawn out. I rather, I don't want to, because then how, if, 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 if two commissioners don't like it and two do, then we we have a, a, an approved site plan mm -hmm. and then then we get into that where they, and then if I was the applicant, I would say, well, it's approved. I'm going to put in what was approved then, you know, and it's, and that would be it. I mean, uh, you, you, the options are approving, approving it with staff review and or not approving it at all and again I, I think I would go for it as is I'm not I mean some minor things that could be done but I don't think it necessarily needs to be held up for that I support approving with staff review I mean yeah. you know he just had some ideas that we didn't know about yeah. You know, we yeah. so and there's I only so much they can do with it too. People. I mean, they, these are prefab too, so there's only probably a few things they can do with it. So maybe they come up with some ideas. But not to be harsh, but is that our concern? What concern about his proposal for yeah. his ATM? I mean, I right. He I mean, has a prefab unit that he's trying to put in right. for his you for his use, and we're yeah. trying to work with him to try to make it work. It may not. He may have to do then something then that. If that's okay. the case, then, then say I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm just saying, yeah, I, I, I don't have an issue with the way it is. I mean, I you know, I, I'm not worried about it, you know, that little part of it, yep. you know, having to build out, uh, you know, to, to match something because it's just the ATM. If it was the building and, and other parts to it, I would have to, you know, I would want to make sure those were, I'm not worried about the ATM itself. Okay. Uh, you know, but it's, I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the call of the commission. I mean, I, 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 you know, I stand by my comment before that absolutely, you know, we have the design district, but to, again, a jumping off point of an ATM, I, you know, I support, you know, you're my teammate, I support you, that's why um, I agree we shouldn't make it a huge deal, because it is just an ATM, but um, I want to support where you're coming yep. from, mm -hmm. and that's why I trust these two gentlemen, especially with your idea, to flesh it out with the applicant, so it'll prove and keep it moving. But we have to hear yeah. everybody's voice. Yeah. I, th I think my compromise would be, uh, you know, Guilford Savings Bank, you have to understand you're diagonally across from the third New Haven Society uh, church, the brownstone up on the hill looking down on you. And, you know, we're basically looking for something to work with the church and the historical aspects of that little corner of the center of Nordford, uh, you know, to make it, you know, you had ideas that I didn't even think of. So that being the case, you know, I, th I think, I think I would go with approving it with the stipulation that, you know, Will and Victor, you know, um, they understand where we're coming from and that, you know, we don't want a cookie cutter you know, um, prefabricated plastic, uh, lack of other word, ugly thing planted in the back of your uh, bank, you know, across from historic, one of the few historic things left in Norfolk. Um, you guys okay with that? Will? It's up to you. Yeah, it's yours. Commission. One thing I've learned about us is we can slice and dice this for hours nope. and it's not it's well, not so appropriate. So question. that's why yeah. I say we keep it in the more than capable hands of the town. I agree. I don't think we should make a bigger deal than it is. And I'll leave it up to Will and Victor as well. Use your best judgment. You understand our position. The green yeah. poles kinda 
Just do something different. Just to soften up a little bit. That's all. Thank you. That one's up. So we gotta write a right, we gotta write a motion then. Well the motion I, I don't have it here obviously, but um, your motion could be something on you're approving it, what they're proposing, subject to standard conditions that you already have, um, subject to making uh, the detail revisions um, that are illuminated in my memo number one, which are echoed in the applicant's memo response, but get those incorporated on the plans. Um, I think you mentioned another condition was the marking on the pavements for the ATM directional and the stop sign. Um, and to another condition to consider an architectural element with regards to the post, the canopy, and the, and the bollards. Uh, How about let's do this? How about repeating that in a second? Uh, I was, I was, well, I was writing. Someone could say as moved. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. so we could. So moved. Right. So moved to what Will said. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> now we can we can just make sure we can if we just want to go through it. So we have the st uh, stop symbol or, or stop sign or some markings uh, in the one area. Um, ATM marking with a, a directional uh, maybe on the ground or it could be a sign either one as long as there's some kind of markings on there or some kind of directional. Making uh, sure there's enough room for, with that curb curb cut out. which you already gonna look yep. into. And um, making sure somehow it fits in with yeah some this design. some 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 type of design um, uh, a little bit more suited to the design district and this historical district that it's in okay. and plan details as in my memo and the only last time is oh, the plan detail with that well there's you want to have documented on yeah the on the plans line. which okay. they did in a memo but we want to incorporate those in the plan. Okay. Um, and the last item for consideration might be, what are we, are we resolving anything about landscaping? Um, well, we do have to add, do we add, and, and the motion that we moved, did they have in there that uh, staff review? You, you put that in there, right? Yeah, this is okay. what yeah. Uh, Landscaping, I don't, in regards to what area, can you put it back up? There you go. Okay. So we're creating two. One island's getting larger. Well, they're both getting larger. So you. So our recommendation was to have some landscaping in there. I know there's some security concerns, but um, you know perennials grow low, so they're not really going to have high views. So you could put perennials in. I'm not sure would a tree be objectionable on the far end because you're not. That's behind you, not in front of you. Uh, yeah, our original thinking in this is that we would do grass. We have phenomenal landscapers, um, and then reevaluate if there's shrubbery that can be placed to occupy some of that grass in line with the uh, staff recommendation. Any thoughts on that? I think. I mean. Trish, to your comments earlier on, the less the better. Yeah, yeah. How much would that be? So I mean, I'm I'm okay with the grass only. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. So, any other discussion that we need to have? If if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And, uh, that passes four to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. But you're not going away. I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to slide over though. Okay. All right. So I got to get a hold of my stuff here. Again. So this was number ten, right? And we are moving to number nine. Now who? Let's see. Uh, next is new business application. 2021-9 and again it's uh, Guilford Savings Bank and it's for a free standing sign. No, it's for uh, oh. building signage. Two signs on, on the two faces of the building. Oh, okay. And I don't know if they want to re-discuss the ATM or not. Okay. Good, Good evening. 
I know we have a full crew. Pardon? I said we have a full crew now. <laughs> I am uh, Renee Pallenberg. I'm the marketing director of Guilford Savings Bank. I have with me Alex, you met earlier, who's in charge of operations, and Dan Litwin, who is our design, uh, sign design partner. The proposed signs in the application were purposeful. Um, we selected design elements that balance the aesthetics of the building without adding unnecessary light pollution to the surrounding area. The exterior proposed signs will emit low voltage LEDs um, that give more of a glow effect rather than direct light or glaring light. I know there were a lot of concerns about that. The low voltage, voltage LEDs um, will only emit through the logo, and we'll look at that in a minute. So it, it, we're, we did our best to minimize the lumen produced by the signage while ensuring visibility at night for drivers who might be looking for our location. So we want to balance both of those needs. In our opinion, we feel the style of lighting is within the spirit of the code and the regulation for the Northford Design District and meets the desired feel for the Northford Center. We can walk through each of these quickly if you'd like to start there or do you want to just go for specific questions? Oh, no, you can keep on going. Okay. So this is the exterior um, portion of the building that just the um, signs are designed. What we're proposing is their interior lit channel signs. So there's LED inside. It emits a very low, as I mentioned, kind of a glow because it's in green and blue. It's not in white. So it's a very soft lighting. We did this in our North Haven office. I don't know if anybody has seen it at night. Um, but again, the goal is to get some visibility without having a glaring bright light. Those would be the two um, building signs that we're proposing there. Any questions before we move on to the next signs? That is the vision. Um, that's what's currently installed in our North Haven office. So you kind of get a sense of what the day and night looks like, that um, interior lit translucent vinyl um, bases in the color. We can go on to the next one. And this would be the um, what we call the monument side on the front of the building on Middletown Avenue. So it is a solid light blocked vinyl and just the lettering which is in that green translucent and the blue translucent vinyl is what would show. So it's lit from the interior but it's kind of a reverse where the light is blocked except for the logo where the logo is exposed. So those are the three lights that you're proposing. Um, now those are similar locations as the previous Thing, correct because I think there was yes. one they had a monument out front they had a monument out front and then the two that you had up there I mean in the same location correct okay. so you put from roughly the same location yes and there were some questions that were posed I think initially from the memo from the staff as well as um, I'm not sure who posed the email today we can address those if you'd like yeah please so the first question um, was regarding the wall signage we you did ask for the measurements uh, that wasn't originally included so the total measurements of the wall um, was a memo I think you have attached in your third tab there so we did address that in terms of the size it is well below the um, the 5% and 10% maximum. So per the calculation, we are looking at right. Yeah, they're both well below, I think. Yeah, 4.1% yeah. and 2.3%. Yeah. Yeah, well so that was the first question posed. The second question posed was related to the freestanding sign on Middletown Avenue and whether or not the base would need to be included in the total signage. So we propose a solid base. It's not, there's no logo, there's nothing on it. The point is to raise the sign enough to get better visibility coming north and south on Middletown Avenue. Okay. Then we can address the um, ATM if you'd like to go there. Please. 
So this is the same concept where it's the light blocked vinyl um, finish and then just the lettering, the lighting is behind it so it's just the lettering that kind of gives that glow effect. So you'll see day and night, during the day it just looks like solid colors on the, um, the white background and then at night that white section is blocked out so you just see the blue and the green of the logo and the only bank you'll ever need. There was a question about how that signage was calculated and the total signage calculation um, and it was proposed um, in the memo that it would serve as the permitted freestanding sign for Mansfield Drive so still within the regulations for total signage. You don't get on that? As far as having a sign, they could use that as yep. a free stand. Yep. And then the last point um, that was raised in the memo had to do with the lighting on the ATM itself. So the downward lighting, um, they are recessed LEDs. Uh, there was a question raised about the watts of the lumens. Um, they're 20 watts, uh, 2,670 lumen. Um, but they are recessed, they're anti-glare, they're specifically stated as anti-glare light to provide uh, low glare, short distribution, um, glare control. And the privacy screens, screens that are on the ATMs themselves are also um, anti-glare. I think that was the only question about the ATM signs there. So in our opinion, we feel that the glow from the interior lit signs is actually less of a, um, it's more in keeping with this, I mentioned the spirit of the regulation, which is not to have these glary bright lights, even though they're technically interior lit signs. Any questions on the signage? Reasonable? Well, I have a few, I have a couple questions. Sure. I'm just confused if, we're not, if our regs don't allow for internally lit lighting, why is that being proposed? Or that's up to us? And then to piggyback on that, we have Rite Aid with an externally lit sign that just recently, I mean, last 10 years, right? Well, that's, that's exterior lit, but on the same token, you have two gas stations with internally lit signs, LEDs for their signage. So a little confused on where we're going, like Trisha. I think the Northbridge Wait, stores. Has an internally lit sign? I'm sorry. Rite Aid has an internally lit sign. It, it does, but it also has. I, I'm not sure, but it has exterior uh, bulbs. I think. I don't know what we did, so we should be consistent in our decision on if we're well, going to yeah, allow this. We right. others to do it then. To Correct. Yeah, I didn't know that, right? So yeah, we've allowed others to do it, and how can we say no? Well, no, I mean, no, we, did we? we, 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 we let's oh, let's hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, let, let's look at the options. So, what happened at Rite Aid was, look, no, no, I don't think anybody was. I wasn't around at that time, yeah. stuff. So that 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 lighting caused concerns because it was just big, bright lighting shining out over to you know the road, and I mean. It, it just stood out. It, it didn't fit. I didn't shout out to the road, but it just didn't fit. Yeah. So the options are, I mean, they could do some kind of, I mean, they could, if they wanted to illuminate that, the option would be to put some lighting on the ground and, sh and shine back out. And I don't think that's an option. I don't think this is a base by any means. So, I mean, you're going to have lighting coming down. I mean, that, that's, that's that part of it, illuminating the area. I don't know. If, I don't necessarily think that's, it's not right aid. No, and it, it needs you know, and it needs some. It does need. I mean, the only thing they could do is put lighting on the ground and shine it up, so that people could see where the ATM is or that the ATM's there. And I don't think that's. I'm talking about normal. all the signs. Yeah, I'm specifically yeah. talking about the block sign in the front of the building. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with the LEDs and okay. the, the, the appearance yeah, of this, yeah. but if we're going if we're going to have the uh, LEDs, yeah, which, which talk about, yeah. I think they yeah, look great. Yeah, I think they're right. fine. They're not intrusive. They meet the requirement. But if we're going to allow them to do it, then we should be consistent. And uh, uh, LEDs is wonderful, right? So 2,700 blooms is the uh, incandescent bulb, basically, so more or less. Do gas stations have internally illuminated huh? signs? They have, the, they have the numbers lit up for the, what you call it? 
the um, gas prices and or with Sunoco or Shell or whatever. Yeah. So, so whatever that, how that all worked out. All right. But yes, well, 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 consistency is not the regulation. The regulation yeah. says it does not allow it. Yeah. So we can't right approve something yeah. unless there's a way that if you feel that's not internally illuminated, which it is. I need some help on that. I'm struggling from you. with that. Because it's, I mean, it's our regulation that it's, it's not to be internally illuminated. So we, we could we could approve that unless there's those signs are, are considered. I know they're LED. I mean, at the time of that regulation, and I'm and I don't recall, but I think that regulation came up shortly after Rite Aid's. Um, I, I and I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but that's the concern. So we can't really approve that, a, a, approve this the way it yeah. is. Because it's against the regulation now. We, can, you know, like I said, LEDs uh, has come a long way. But we would have to change the regulation for that. Yeah, I'm struggling. So with that. yeah, so we can't. There's nothing we can do on this one. I mean, if, if it's internally, and unless there's a way, as an engineer, you could tell me that's not inter internally uh, illuminated. We can't. We can't even. You know, we can't can you go bring back to the picture of the freestanding sign as well? The monument style? Yeah. <coughs> that one? Yeah. We'd, we'd have to change the regulation, basically, right? Because right. in order for that to comply, instead of down, up, it's overhanging, shining on it. The old style right. fit for the, the district. The only other selection choice that might work is you can still have the same kind of lettering, and you, have, you could have it backlit that is not in the box and the light is just going around the letters. You're not lighting up the letters, you're just doing a halo around the, the letters. Now, whether you can get enough brightness to show the letters, Can't I'll leave that to the sign guy, but that's, that's, that would not be well, internally illuminated. Right, I mean, as, as you're suggesting, right? I'm struggling with, we have a reg, and we're gonna, we have to follow our reg. Right, so the options are changing it. I mean, we can't do, that that's, doesn't happen in one night. Correct. That happens over. No, that's a, I'm that's struggling a little bit with the monument design of the sign as well. I don't know about any of my other fellow commissioners, but I think we got to get past the the internally illuminated. Yeah, I think I think we're going to have to ask you to come up with something else that fits into the regulation. I, we 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 can't do anything. I mean, we could change the regulation. I mean, I'm not not saying we would change it. We the way we do that would have to go through a text amendment uh, public hearing, uh, and I don't and that's I don't know where that'll end up. But that's probably like a, two months would take about a month and a half or so. Okay. So I think, I mean, what was there before? If you come up with something similar to what was there before, use it as a guideline and our regulations. I think that would be better suited. Because I mean, we we just can't. Right, your hands are tied. I understand. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because the lights will provide so. more brightness than this. Yeah, no, I mean, does, I, we, you know? no. As we said, the, the LED has come a long way at the time of that regulation. Uh, yeah, there, I don't, there, I don't think the LED was uh, you know, used for the signage. I don't know if it was even around that at that time. But uh, I mean, it's something we would, you know. Yeah. Glad that you're bringing this to our attention so we can take a look at that down the road. But as far as this goes, I just don't see, you know, there's nothing we really can do with that. So, uh, I don't know, we, do we leave this open and have them come back? Does it's somewhat up to them. I mean, if you want to go back and see if you can come with a solution that meets the code, we can stay within this application. Sure. You want to do that? Yeah, because we don't want to can and then start the whole process all over again. Could, could yeah. I just, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Oh, no, so no, no, their, no. their no. sign expert is, is here. The and I apologize, I forgot your name, the gentleman to the left. And I hate to to say it this way, but I don't know if you can shed any light on <laughs> this. <laughs> 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 I, I don't want to, uh, one thing I don't want to do or, or make you do is, is say something that may contradict what your, your client is moving towards with their sign package and their, uh, you know, their concept for for what their Guilford Saving Bank sign should should look like. I mean, Sorry, I'm setting you up. No, <laughs> I mean, I think the only thing that I heard that, you know, 
is um, if you're locked in as a commission based on the regs in front of you, there's, I don't know what there is to talk about, but you know, if uh, through, uh, if, if you wanna go through that process, if you would consider it, if I were to be able to rewrite the regs, perhaps one thought is to have what you have, but make it subject to uh, a certain output of light, a certain quality of the color of the temperature of the light, etc. cetera. Um, I, I mean, I think that would sort of accomplish your goal of what, what you don't want perhaps in, in town is a, an ugly, you know, unfiltered white light whether it's coming through a cabinet or whether it's you know above or from below, you, you don't want to see white light and you don't want it in your face. So to me, um, I, I feel like what we're proposing here, and you know, is really, as, as Renee said, it really is beautiful, and you can see an example of it in North Haven. And I think it would fit the character of the historic district really nicely. And, and to your point, I. LEDs have only been in the sign industry for maybe popular for 10 or 20 years. Before that, we were using these tubes. And you, you don't have the same flexibility um, with a tube. You, you can't really regulate the amount of light coming out as easily, uh, the directionality of it. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, but if you're asking me as far as the, uh, the architecture of the sign itself, the LEDs are, are strips almost like Christmas lights, if you will, uh, and they're spaced apart. So um, one of the things you know, that we can do as sign makers is we can get lower or higher uh, wattage LEDs. We can get, make the spacing closer or further apart. Um, we can put a dimmer on the thing. So, I mean, there are a lot, there's a lot that we can do to work with you or your staff to make it um, as pleasing as you want it to be. Um, so, but I understand if you're stuck, you're stuck. I yeah, and plus this, you know, tonight's design district night, because every, every application is in our, our design, historical uh, design district. district. So that's why, you know, the no backlit lighting. So, I mean, even, even if there is a text amendment, I can't guarantee you that that's gonna happen. Okay. You know, because of where it is. Because that's, 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 that would be a public hearing, because that's a text amendment change, and that's a public, uh, public hearing. And, you know, those districts uh, mean a lot to uh, us, you know, us folks in, in North Brantford, in both sections, North Brantford and Northford. So. So my recommendation right now, let's keep this open. If you can spitball some ideas of maybe some other you know, non-lit signs. If you can't do that, then I would say that the text amendment would be your avenue, but I can't guarantee, you know, right. we can't guarantee that that would go through. Well, the same thing with, you know, if, even if you can't illuminate the sign and it doesn't, also whatever freestanding design you come up okay. with, okay. again, to have yeah. elements of the historical design district. Uh, there is a, a comment in here, I'm not sure where it came from, about the halo lighting, so that is acceptable. No, that was... Well, yeah, well, that was I, what I was suggesting, is that, uh, does anyone understand what I mean by the halo? It, it, you have the same letter, the solid letter. The light is behind it, it's not in a box because the light is going around it and giving a halo effect and it's lighting the, the word, the letters up. Yeah, something like that. So they're not internally lit. They're, it's not internally lit. Correct, it's behind it. So, so I think that, that, would, that would meet the code. Right. Mm -hmm. I think our code is antiquated and, you know, maybe if we just tripped over the fact that uh, you know, we should be moving forward with it. Yeah. Or, not. Yeah. Or, not. Yeah. or not. Or not. Or, or some people right. believe that there should be, you know, that doesn't there fit. should be very limited lighting in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, that's and that's where I think that I think that when the regulation was tweaked, and I think I was on the commission, then that was the whole thing, the whole area was we want we want to make sure there was not excessive lighting coming onto the road, but also to keep it, you know. 
And that like some buildings there, some businesses that had certain money. So that's where I think that regulation came from. Yeah. But I, so. I, I think you have more flexibility, like Dan said, yeah. that oh, you, know, yeah. you, you could you know, tweak the sounds even uh, yeah. like a dimmer in your dining room. You know, it's yeah, like I said, I don't have it also affects the canopy too because it's into, it's back it's back, uh, back as well. So. Okay. But so let's keep let's let's keep this open because there's no sense closing. So if there's a, an a, an option that meets our regulation and we can use this, and if you, like I said, and I if and I'm going to strongly suggest trying to use the regulation as it is because like I said, there might be no guarantee down the road. I mean, I, we all think that, you know, LED has come a long way, uh, but there's more factors would have to be con considered at that time. So, so if you're going to do that, I would recommend you make a motion to adjourn pending resubmission. Um, if, if it goes past the next meeting, because um, you're not re if you're not ready, um, have to get an extension we need an extension, so would, that, would you grant that extension time? Because we, we're out of time after on the September 11th, so our next meeting is the second and the 16th. So we would need to know on the second if you, if you need more time, or so any any time before this, on or before the second, to let us know that yeah we need more time to come up with a plan, and then we can extend it. So you would have to give us. Uh, well, if they're in agreement with that, your motion can be pending resubmission with that extension to whenever they resubmit. Oh, okay, gotcha. And that is in starting a new application, so we didn't have to have everything submitted yesterday, right? There's it's not starting a new application. Okay. You're just continuing with this. You, right. you have to have it in advance of the meeting, but so we can get it to them. But okay. right. yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Did you just a yeah. point of clarification: yes. you had requested some more historical elements in the street sign. Is that what the freestanding sign? Thing? Yeah. Uh, well, but that's, I mean, uh, what's your what concern with the freestanding sign? So I just feel that you know similar like that is that seems to me way too contemporary just like one it looks like a headstone two it just seems way too contemporary um, <laughs> you know and if you can't illuminate it um you know and it's just also coming off the thinking we've talked so much about signs yep. that you know i just feel like no we on that yeah it's just it's too cookie cutter too like boom like it, that doesn't fit in, I don't, and that's the person you see, right? You know, the ATM's behind, like to the point, the ATM's behind that I forget that that parking lot is so long, but this is one of the first things you see that that like right. really stands out amongst all the other architecture there. Agreed. Look at you, Mike, come on, I'm when you can speak. <laughs> Absolutely, you're right on track. Yeah. At least the bottom portion. Right. Yeah. Okay. To clarify, you are agreement with the, the extension aspect, right? Okay, so you can include that in your motion. Okay. One, one quick question. Yeah. I know that building is kind of close to the road. Does that sign fit in with our setbacks? Yeah, they're fine with that. Okay. So again, the motion would be to adjourn pending resubmission by the applicant and um, equal amount of extension time as needed based on that resubmission date. So moved. Is there a second? Second? Who seconded? Bob. 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 Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Ooh, Aye. Ooh, ooh, hold on. Is it. It's not a continuation. It's a. We're canceling the old. No, you're adjourning, adjourning this matter till they resubmit. We're pausing. That's it. Pausing. They're going to see we're tabling it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. Semantics. I'm sorry. So all, just all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes 4-0. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I have uh, both of your names again? I'm Alex Lopasso. Oh, Alex? Lopasso. S-U-L-P-A-S-S-O. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank Dan, you. Dan Litwin. Litwin. L-I-T-W-I-N. Of okay, Printing. Uh, next order of business, and if we can keep on going. Yeah. Um, application 2021-7, 1565 Middletown Ave. Terry, I do have. Uh-oh. Uh -oh.
Good evening, Jim Preddy, Criscolo Engineering. Um, uh, with me is Steve Azuto representing the, uh, the LLC uh, that owns the property. So uh, this, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the Mill Pond Tavern. Um, oh, yeah. That's what they usually don't give as much help. I was looking at it, I was like, I'm your fan of white man. So um, uh, we're, we're here for a couple of minor revisions to the site plan. Uh, one is in up, up in front of the, the building addition right there. Um, we had a concrete kind of a, uh, we had a concrete ramp there before that kind of went alongside the building. Uh, the proposal is just move it out from the building a little bit and cover it similar to what was there before. If you can all remember, there was always this covered walkway as a drop off area. So they want to re kind of recreate that um, and it caught kind of right there. And it kind of softens the front of that building. But the thought was to try to recreate that piece that was there before. Um, so that's one, that's one revision. And the other one is um, over the remains of the old dam, um, they're putting in a footbridge. Uh, they had, they did, so this is, this has been at wetlands and approved at this point, but um, they had permission to do a temporary bridge, like a dunnage uh, wood side bridge, while the main bridge was being built. Uh, it didn't work out, safety concerns, more disturbance, so they, they built part of what we're hoping to get approved as a footbridge over that, the, the remains of the dam. Um, and there's, no, that's the ramp detail. Uh, looks but the but the the bridge looks just yeah, like it. Uh, it's basically the same yeah. kind of thing. Uh, there it was in, there was some eight and a half by elevens that were part of the package that showed a section through the bridge. Um, again, it's not going to be uh, where public's going to be walking in from the street over that way. It's more for pictures for. The brides, you know, if they're using the facility, eventually it may, it be, hopefully it'll become part of a, more of an educational type thing when they get more of the old the mill exposed and uh, maybe in the future even get the wheel turning again. Uh, that's that's the thought anyway. But that's down the road a little bit. Right now we're focused on trying to get the restaurant open this fall. So um, those are the two changes, the footbridge over the old dam and the uh, covered uh, handicap ramp. Victor, can we see some of the, the footbridge? I think, is it in the... Uh it's not on the, I don't have on the computer. It would have been in your materials you got. Uh, well, you wouldn't have it, Rob, because no, it was the previous meeting materials. But it's not much different than that, it looks that section detail. Very similar. Like it's just a, peak, it's just a peak roof. Okay, let me pull my two cents in. Um, for safety reasons, I don't understand why you guys didn't come up with this you know, right out of the box. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's another way of getting from your property across the river. Uh, agreed, and that's the other element. Um, the, so temporarily they had a few parking spaces for workers to park yes. and get across, and that, that well, won't be parking, but it is gonna be out. left. Well, the main bridge was out. Yes. And, you know, that functioned very well as another Correct. access for, you know, for safety reasons. I think that was a good idea, and it should have been incorporated into the original plan. Uh, Agreed, and again, it wasn't um, it wasn't part of the plan originally. It kind of I know that's sort of right. morphed it into should it. Have been. Right. Um, well, just like you know, aesthetic uh, walkway that everybody remembers. Like you, you yes. kind of recognize on that. Yeah. Now I that mean, I everybody remember remembers that. that. You remember Mill Pond? You remember that walkway yeah. coming down? It was like yep. the, yeah. that was the nostalgia of the Mill Pond. Yeah. I mean, that's that kind of put it where it belongs. Yeah. And Lo and behold, like you oh, said, sir, the bridge, the same thing. I'm trying to just accommodate the construction and the materials and moving it along as we did. And then it became an idea for like a possible bride and groom uh, photo shoot over the bridge and or on the other side where we are going to um, promote the um, historical attributes of the property, as Jim was saying, down the road. 
eventually get the thing open first. But there was a, a section and a plan in the package. Um, that I, I mean, if you want to is look, that, take is a look that at already it. there, uh, Jim? This is for the bridge. I mean, so the bridge is um, six feet wide between the railings inside. So it, it is another means of, if God forbid, somebody had to get a stretcher across or a wheelchair or something, or, you know, in, in a, I don't know what, the bridge is concrete, the new one. But Okay, look, let, let me ask the, the crazy question. Um, because it's a bridge over Farm River and you had to jump through hoops to get the main bridge, does this fall under with the Army Corps of Engineers? Or, is this, or is this a farm bridge that a farmer can cross a river to get to his? There's a couple of things. We're not affecting the, the waterway at all. Um, so the Army Corps is out of the picture, unless you're affecting the edge of the river somehow. Um, Army Corps is usually out of the picture for that. Uh, the, as far as um, any other regulatory, we're above the, the water surface elevation for the 100-year flood, even with the bottom of the uh, columns. Mm -hmm. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we're out of the picture with that too. So we're not really affecting the river at all. This is really just, because it's not navigable up here, so that takes some of it out of it. Yeah, but didn't you have to put steps or something for the uh, for the main bridge? So it's at, on the highway side, it's actually at grade because the, the dam kind of, the old dam actually kind of blends into the grade. Um, and then on the other side, it it blends into an area on the top that kind of a triangular area that was the old dam yeah uh there that's i mean that's actually been regrouted so it's all stable there um it's, it's an easily walkable uh, area so there's no steps to get on and off the bridge it's smooth no not, not steps on the bridge i'm saying they uh for to get by. Oh no, oh so no, the, the waterway under the dam hasn't been touched since it's broken in 72 or whatever it was. I remember it well. Yeah. Is there, is there a path from the bridge? So you, you know, you mentioned the road where people So park. there is. So are you going to be able to, I mean, is, or is there going to be a, a cutoff where you can't go any further? Um, there'll be a gate on there so that when the restaurant's not open, people can't just walk it, through okay. there. Um, but the, to answer your question, there is a path, the driveway they were using that goes, it's the old roadbed from when the highway, before the highway got moved, that goes down to the, the next house right where their driveway is. And when that, when you had that road, that was not, you weren't using the uh, other property owner's uh, property. The curb cut, yeah. You were using it. He got permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Okay. Anything else? What color do you think you're going to paint it red? <laughs> <laughs> the only comment I have about it looks looks great. Um, the only something you should consider um, is the uh, decking surface. You might want to put some kind of sanded paint to keep it from yeah. skid resistant. I think it's because um, it got just pressure treated. No, I think it's it textured? the textured um, engineered deck boards. Oh, okay. It just says pressure treated. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, the, all the all the decking was replaced with uh, textured. And it's going to be seen so the heels are right between the steps. Pick up your shoes and go barefoot. Do you have plans for uh, a railing around the uh, buttresses? I guess the abutments. Wing yeah, walls? they're actually uh, going to be even on the lower section where that wall is. And there's a sidewalk. There's railings going in there. There's all uh, like you know, metal railings going in. It's all proposed. Yeah. Good. Good. I don't think I don't have anything else, Harry. Okay. Anything else? Can we for it to open? Yep. So we have. So uh, <laughs> we have we have a draft motion. So if you. Uh, I mean, wait. No. To my point, I was being facetious, but the are there going to be seams in the the bridge? Seems. I'm just being facetious, between, but now that I'm thinking about like, floor. I know when I walk in my heels, if I want to be a bride and be up there and walk in my heels, I don't want my heel to go through a seam. No, but the, it's it's like tight. Like if there's yeah. like wood, is it like a deck, where then like a heel can go in the it's seam? Flush. It's yeah, I mean it's a deck, but it's the pre-engineered. 
tight oh, deck, so this right. whole, it's tight. I was being silly at first, but then I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, it's <laughs> it's an issue now. when you're walking there. The new brights were white sneakers. <laughs> you know what? This is they true. Do. We don't know. They do. Or no shoes. Or no shoes no at all. <laughs> at some point, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So I make a motion to approve the proposed modification of prior approved special use permit site plan. PZC number 2019-11 with the addition of a permanent pedestrian footbridge across Farm River and the relocation of an exterior covered pedestrian ramp leading to the mid-level building entrance for property and facilities located at 1565 Middletown Road. We say Avenue or Road? Oh, sorry. To, sorry. That's all right. 1565 Middletown Avenue subject to findings and condi conditions as per draft resolution 819. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So that's, uh, if you want to just take, take a second to just read three, you know, just to make sure that you, there's nothing outstanding on it. So you can shut that down. Yeah. All right. I never can remember how to. I never can remember how to shut that. People like me, yeah. when it's hot yeah. and when it's cold, doesn't bother me. Yeah. Uh, so any any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, folks. That, that has four to zero. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right. So we have, just to go over a couple things, uh, old business, uh, application 2021-5, uh, which was the text amendment in the R40 district for the density change in the uh, single dwellings, that was withdrawn. Yep. And a town planner's report. So I have on your dais, there's, there's two packs, one is green, one is yellow. Those are materials for the next two meetings. So the, they're grouped together. Um, and there obviously may be more stuff when we mail it to you. But those are the materials for the next two meetings. The one thing I'd like to have added on to the next, me uh, next meeting is the, oh, no. Well, if we. Uh, it would either be the 16th or the October. Oh, right, because you got to put the paper. Yeah. Yep. So there's just two things that are coming up. Um, uh, one is the state put out a accessory um, apartment or dwelling regulation um, we have one uh, the state has made some changes that may not we may not want to take you know, uh, you know to include in ours mm -hmm. if that's the case we have to opt out and we would have so we're going to do a public hearing decide if we want to incorporate or not and then if we don't we opt out then it goes to town council for their vote and then it goes back to the state the other one is that we uh, will uh, mention that we one thing we have to do um, and we can discuss at the next meeting is the our moratorium runs out in October October for um, and actually your moratorium doesn't cover the current legislation what's that your current moratorium does not cover the current legislation it was rather specific so you would have to uh, retail yeah so yeah. you would have to extend and expand the moratorium that would be your first course of action and then work on regulation or discussion about what you want to do so moratorium would this be is cannabis so yeah. you have a, a moratorium on oh for restaurants or no the moratorium would be for ca cannabis so that you don't get forced with something yeah 
So you just give me your time to write the regulations. Um, I mean, you can talk to the town attorney more about that. Yeah, I'm going to have, yeah, because we have it so you can't do retail. I forget exactly what the moratorium is, but you're going, it, you're, it's going to expire. Right. So if you're going to extend it, you all, I also saw a need to change what it covers. Okay. Right. So we will have, yeah. we'll have to do that um, in the next meeting or two. Well, right. it's a hearing. It's a text amendment. Well, no. So the, mor the moratorium. So yeah, the text moratorium. Amendment. But yeah. you have to decide what you want to do. Yeah. I say let's do the moratorium and expand it because... We're not going to get it together for an amendment and all that in a month. Yeah, I so think that's where the town reads, attorney guys, that so. shall not accept or consider any application to permit the establishment of medical marijuana pr producers, dispensary facilities, and retail distribution for a period of 12 months, commencing from effective yeah. date of October 2020, 2020. The reason for more term is to allow planning and zoning to review state yeah. regs, such and such, and associated apps, produce um, process we'll for producers, etc. Um, expiration of the moratorium is October 2nd, 21. Yeah, because it, yeah. when it says retail, I thought that card covered everything. There's year. more to the current law than retail, is it? Oh, yeah, there's okay. producers, manufacturers, delivery services. Um, there's like nine, 11 different uses, yeah. Okay, but either way, you got to extend it. So, yeah, extending yeah. it if we need to change. Well, I got to make sure we can because I, I think it was already extended once. Uh, you can until you get sued. Well, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, you have I some you saying. have some justification because you have new legislation that just passed. Right. So. All right. So we should put that on for September second. So I can get those both going. The, the yeah. The, the, they opt out in the. Okay. Yeah. Can you get cannabis? Can you talk, have our lawyer? Can you have our lawyer Vinny put something together for us? Yeah, I can work with them to get okay. that going. That part of it. Anyway, yeah. So. yeah. All right. All right. Ron. I've got a pile of maps in front of me. Right. <laughs> Th that being the case, right. you know, I motion we adjourn. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good, e good evening, everybody. Ooh. The recycling bin is.